Ilona Selke. Ilona Selke is an international best-selling author. She's a seminar leader, lecturer, and a musician, and a founder and see uh, co-founder of Living from Vision, a company that she's been running with her husband for over thirty years. She's also the owner and creator of Shambhala Retreat Center on the North Shore of Bali. She and her husband owned a dolphin research boat in Florida. For over ten years, and lived by a dolphin beach in Hawaii for almost twelve years, she wrote this extraordinary dolphin research in two of her books. Over thirty plus years, Elona has inspired thousands of people worldwide to discover the power of their consciousness to understand and apply quantum understanding of our universe. And what is more important is that she teaches step by step. how to apply the quantum principles her latest book dream big thank you so much elona for being a, our speaker today and your topic is how to apply the power of consciousness in daily life at home and work over to you thank yeah, you welcome so elona thank you i'll be waiting <laughs> thank you yeah okay Dr. Yogendra, Yogendra yes, thank please. you, thank you so thank much you. for having this incredible platform to get across the concept of one world united and how we all live in one consciousness and how we participate. And yes, indeed, my forte in the last thirty-five years of teaching has been applied quantum consciousness. We were teaching quantum consciousness. My husband and I both are involved in the field, either through technology, which uses scalar informational fields, and have been working with doctors and scientists and researchers in getting real down-to-earth results, like growing food with information. Mind you, no chemicals involved, just information. As far as between China, South America, China,、uh, Mexico, Europe, everywhere,、um, and、uh, both of us have been working in the field of meditation and then applying quantum consciousness because the best quantum producer is between our ears. This consciousness tuned instrument that can make our world a better place. So thank you for having me. I appreciate、um, your presence here and. I'll be waiting for your questions to guide it more specifically and directly. Thank you. I was told it was going to be fifteen minutes in interaction,、yes. and you wanted some guided meditation. Yeah, after, yeah, after panel discussion. Okay. All right. So,、uh, one thing that I got from your last discussion is the necessity to understand what is this external world, and are we all on the same level? Is there a, a one fit for all kind of teaching? And Dr. Yogendra, you were mentioning there are so many、uh, techniques and methods out there, and I believe.、Um, We that the Dalai Lama said we live in a soul-centric universe, which means we actually are at the center of our universe, and we will experience the laws that we declare our through our belief systems, our actions, our words, and our vibration. Which means that the vibration we each hold、uh, determine the laws of physics that are applied to us in our life. And that's the great news, and I believe we're coming into an era, a new millennium, in which a higher vibrating, conscious human being is existing on this planet. And gratitude to your platform, this information will get out more and more popular.、Um, but we do need to understand that not everybody is at the same level. We are in a big Earth school, and as such, everybody. Is at their vibratory rate and applies their own ability. So one fundamental law that I find that applies to all of us is our ability to raise our vibration through one simple sentence, because all of us eventually will meet into obstacles. And that was shared to,、uh, in the book, "The Lazy Man's Guide to Enlightenment" by Thaddeus Golas, and、um, it goes like this. I, actually, let me tell you just a brief story. I was sitting in London at age 19, wanting, having dreamt of becoming a philosophy student, but I was trying to make money beforehand. I was in a luxury hotel, surrounded by teak furniture, and I'm like sitting there crying because I'm like going, "What got me into this miserable luxury condition?" Other than other people might be, they would be joyful and going, "Like I've got it, I've made it." I was like dismayed. 
and I opened a book, which you can do, you know, arbitrarily, and it said, this too, you can learn to love. And I think if all of us take this one sentence to heart and apply this to instances of problematic moments in our lives, whether it's with our family members or an event in our life or the political situations, we look at it and we see where we withdraw our attention and say, I don't like it. And we just ask ourselves, this too you can learn to love because it's all made of the one substrate, the sub substratum of God, the divine expressed in every particle there is, but in different variations in, like you see behind me, the different fractals. And when we encounter something, we resist, we contract ourselves, we become denser, like a billiard ball, um, like the photon that hits things instead of the wave expression of light, which quantum physicists are pointing to, we're all discovering that we can move into the understanding that we are a field. So by coming into the question of this too, I can learn to love. So I sat in my hotel room and I looked around and I thought, okay, this too, I can learn to love. And I opened my heart and I thought, why not give it a try? So all of us probably have something right now in our lives that may be more or less, less favorable, whether it's co conditions, the political affair, arena, even the lockdowns or whatever. What is it that we could say to ourselves, this too, you can learn to love. And when you love something, you become more and more one with it. You flow into unity. And if you just took even the planet and all the many people on it with its many different ideals. And right now we're experiencing, especially in Europe and America, a splitting of opinions, a splitting of truths. Instead, we're becoming the synthesis and we're becoming the point of view that looks at it and says, this belongs to duality as much as this belongs to duality. And as such, both are equally important and necessary. That's when you become the apex of perception and look at the duality more as the playground of quantum foam that turns on, like Alexander said, it's the zero and the one, you know, it's flashing on and off. Like the illusion, like the seers in India said, Maya, it's not real. It's not the ultimate reality. But when you shift your awareness into saying, this too I can learn to love, what is it that this really wants? And that's the magic question. It's like the three magic words you can ask anything. What do you really want? And in its higher expression at a higher dimension, it will reveal to you its higher expression of itself, whether it's something that appears as negative or as restrictive. And the moment you evoke what it really stands for, anger or frustration really wants love, attention, care, uh, whatever, being understood, if you move into the apex of that next level and you go, oh, I see, this belongs to the dimension that is, let's say, lower than the frequency I'm aiming at, then you can embrace both as part of duality rather than resisting one or the other. And seeing it at the playing field of God, of the divine, to embody itself, to bring itself into this world so that this world becomes the dance of the divine consciousness interacting through your eyes, my eyes, and re-encountering itself, rediscovering its true nature, the God it's incarnated in form. Rather than taking the form as the ultimate truth and fighting it, we become united as the world united in the understanding that we are the consciousness that it resides beyond and, and encounters. But as such, we still have to take care of the form, the resistances, the disappointments, the angers. And when we ask the three magic words, what do you really want to an anger feeling inside of us, it reveals its next potential expression. And then all we need to do is what quantum matrix suggests is move everything into unity. And the moment, basically, you can love your enemy or you can love that which you didn't love before, it becomes the, the ground you stand on. And you then become the master of the next level. And as such, we also develop more compassion to anybody who may not understand 
this level wherever I might be. And I might learn from such another being that has already embraced greater levels of love and unity. Uh, so when swimming with dolphins, I learned the same technique. It's basically we reflect from our soul-centric universe that which we expect. And I am experimenting right now, and I call everybody into action that we teach to at least once a week to envision a solution for a planetary well-being. So let's all do that together right now. With Let's just take a brief moment to close our eyes. And as if we could look at planet Earth as a whole, we just look at all the humans and the, you know, the, the trials and its tribulations and the struggles. We have uh, issues with plastic. We have issues of um, nourishment for a lot of people, um, safety, the virus, whatever else is going on. Um, my pet peeve is the plastic uh, surplus or the trash. So pick one area that you would like to place your attention on to help it evolve to its next level of evolution. Just for the exercise purpose, pick anything that calls your interest. And for a moment, feel into yourself. When you think or feel about this issue, whatever it is, how does it make you feel? It might be feeling, making you feel sad or heavy or angry or frustrated or disappointed or whatever it is. Just notice if there is a feeling that goes along with it, it's a heavier feeling because usually problems make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. Notice the area in your body where you feel it. That feeling of concern or discomfort. And just give this feeling a color. You can make one up if you want, or just maybe something flashes into your mind, a color that could represent this feeling of yours. And I'd like you to take a moment to just notice this area of concern of yours for the planet, the feeling you have, the color you give that feeling. And I'm going to ask you, if this feeling of yours or of you could have what it really would like to have or be or experience, what would that be? If this could have or be anything that it truly, really wanted to be as a solution, as a way of resolving the transformation and actually already be there where the solution had already manifest. What would that feel like? For right now, we don't even need to know what it would be, just what would it like. And if you could give a color to that feeling, what would that be? And maybe there are symbol, there is a symbol that could express this or an image. Maybe it's just a color with energy movement. And now I'd like you to say thank you to that maybe originally heavier feeling that you had, the not so nice one.
and thank it for wanting something so beautiful. Thank it and appreciate it because actually it helped you find out what it really wanted and what it rather would have seen or liked to see. Can you thank it for that? Appreciate it. And just notice how nice that feels that it's being giving gratitude and appreciation, a form of love. Can you ask it now to become part and one, merged completely into that new image, the new expression of what it really would like to be? A feeling image that expresses the greatest ex solution energetically, like what it would, it, the happiness or the joy that you would feel if that had happened. And let it become part of this new color, new image. Until all of its fibers on an energetic basis have become one with the fulfilled version of its wish. And let that touch you and flow through all of your cells, all of your DNA information, letting it, the good feeling touch all parts of you. as you enter that field in which that reality has become manifest. Are you willing to be in such a reality? As we are living in a soul-centric universe, it is our co-creative duty and choice and ability to co-create the outcomes of beauty, a version of a higher frequency expressed on this planet by becoming the vessels that hold that potential within our field. So, for a moment, sense your preferred place that you wanted to help transform on this planet. And just notice the ripple effects through time and space. That your choice brings into the field of all the beings that are willing to be in that world. and how that will bring forth the changes in time and space at the right time in the right way. And when you're willing to live in that kind of world for yourself, you can take a deeper breath, maybe fold your hands in namaste or whatever you enjoy to do, highlighting. And Open your eyes again, being back here. As we are together, let us remember that we are living in a soul-centric universe and we are each contributing with the radiation of our consciousness to the well-being of the one universe, the one world that we live in. So if you take five minutes every week to just contribute to a global dream that sees solutions, I've done these experiments for year after year. I've taken every year a different area of expertise, a different area where I wanted to see change. And then I see, usually within the year, I see the news printed for that solution coming about and proliferating around the planet. So let's remember we are contributing with every thought, with every breath, with every heartbeat and every feeling to the beautification of the 
and the divinification of the life that we all lived collectively together, because the one that is looking out of our eyes needs us to look at that which we wish to see. So thank you so much, Dr. Yoganda, for the, having this opportunity. Yeah. And I'm so happy to see Wai Ching Li, who is an amazing teacher. Thank you for thank being you, here. Thank you, Alona. Thanks a lot. I would like to give a, a surprise by way of revealing a memory of mine with you. A quarter century ago, I happened to read your book. Oh my God. Living from Vision, a quarter century ago. Oh my God. I remember your partner, Don Paris, as well. The subtle energy, five, all the equipment. I was going through all these things for the quarter, more than 25 years for the past. I've been following all your teachings and your experience with the dolphins, your experiences with so many aspects of spirituality. That is so beautiful. Yeah. So much more I, I will I will share uh, in person <laughs> when we meet. Okay. <laughs> when we meet. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you for having so, me here. Yeah.